Hi everyone, my name's Anne-Marie. Welcome to this third day of our Four Days of Easter specials for me joining Team Spell Bloggers and being able to bring you lots of different items and ideas and inspiration for using your Spellbinders items. Today we're going to be using the special birthday sentiments. Now these give a good clear stamp and a nice sentiment for birthdays. Yours will all be straight but I've been in and out of my packet and I should really mount them onto my white stamp board but I wanted you to see them in the packet. And then somehow I've been so excited about bringing you we're going to be making the ladies shoes. These are so sweet and I promise you as soon as you see them you are going to want some in real life. Now everything I do use, if I don't mention it, uh, it's because I've forgotten but I will try and add everything on my blog. There'll be the full list of items that I've used and any extras, any inks or anything. And you will have a link to Spellbinders to be able to go get more information on the product or to be able to purchase it if you want. So that's what we're going to be using today. Now, the first thing, as always, we're going to do the inside of our card. Now, I know it's not the most exciting to some people, but I do like to think that we're making the outside just as pretty for somebody who opens our card um, and looks at their message. I'm using a 7x5 inch card and this is in white. And that's how it looks on our cardometer. It's a nice surface to cover. Uh, it's not too big and not too small. And it is my favourite size. So the first thing we're going to do is the insert. And just to save a little bit of time, I've already cut um, size B. Um, sorry, no, it's not size B. It is from the B set of matting and layering dies, and it is the biggest size. I always get it wrong. It's not size B, it's set B. Because the set A and B of the rectangle matting and layering dies, and I always use B for the insides so that's the largest size that I go for when I'm using whatever paper or anything I'm using it's normally always the largest on set B so just peel off my tape now as you can see I've used a red card and I've already added some ribbon polka dot ribbon around the outside of my card and to do that, I simply added tape at either side, wrapped the ribbon round, and then pulled it across and attached it at the opposite side as well. So I'll pop that inside, like so. And then, using labels 54, I've taken the largest size and I've die cut it in white. I've inked it using fire brick and worn lipstick and using one of our birthday sentiment stamps from Spellbinders um, black stays on ink I've stamped out the words happy birthday and on the back I've written labels 54 because I didn't know if I would be able to remember what size the labels were but it's one of my favourite um, labels so luckily I have been able to remember that one so now I can attach this through the centre of our card over the ribbon. There we go. And that is our insert finished. Very pretty and it will look great with the outside. So I'm just going to make sure I've still got a nice sharp crease. Now I'm going to start building the card up before we make the shoes. Because the shoes are so cute, we're going to get carried away with them. Now for my base layer, I've matted and laid red and white card, again with the ribbon around the centre. This was set A of the rectangle matting and layering dies. And then, then the next size down. So it was the largest of set A and then the next one. If you get any of the little stringy bits along the edge, 
just run your pokey tool along and that should be able to clear them. There we go. So that's the base of my card. Now using labels 54, I've already die cut in some red glitter card and some white card that I've inked again using one lipstick. I've added it on 3D foam, so I'm going to position it on my card like that. And then I've also stamped one of the birthday sentiments onto the um, next smallest of the labels for 54 and inked it around the edge as well. And I'm going to add that to our glitter card and then I can attach that to the front as well and now we're ready for the really fun bit we'll put this to one side because what we're going to make is some shoes these are so pretty they're just so dinky and we're going to make a pair very similar to the red pair but we're going to have glitter insoles instead of the dark um, blue. So these are just so, so gorgeous. I got carried away with making them. Now I know they're called wedding shoes, but they could be for any occasion. I'm saying they're called, they're called ladies' shoes, but they're, just, they're from the wedding collection and I just think they could be used for anything. So what we're going to do is look at the bits that you need to die cut to make them because obviously you're making a pair of shoes so you need two of everything. So we need two of the larger soles, two of the inner soles and two of the bows. So that's what we're going to need to actually make the shoes. First of all what we're going to do is look at making the top of the shoe. Now when you die cut it, there's actually some score lines in your die cut. You might not be able to see those so clearly on that, but they are there. So what I tend to do is fold the top over and then fold the sides over following the score lines and then I'm going to use red tape to be able to stick everything together and might try some of my tape runner on the edge but I think it might have run out yep so we're going to go with red tape now this is one of the strongest tapes you can get and it should hold nicely for our shoes. So we're going to turn the back over like so to make the toe of the shoe and I'm going to add the tape along the edge like that and then I'm going to just add a tiny bit of wet glue as well and turn that over and just hold it just for a few seconds even though I know I've got the tape on the side but I just want to be doubly sure so that's the first toe of our first shoe so we'll do that again so we turn the corner over and fold in the two flaps and then they fold over each other at the back like so. I'll show you it from the back. One side over and then the other side over. So I'll just cut another piece of tape Oops, and then can add that along the edge like so just peel the top 
top of it away and then I can add a little bit of wet glue as well now I've made a few of these over the last few days and I've tried lots of different glue to be quite honest and I've found that the red tape and a little bit of wet glue does the trick so that's the second of our shoe fronts next what we want to do is add our inner sole to the larger outer sole so I'm just going to add a little bit of wet glue to the smaller sole and position it over the top like that and do the same for the second one because obviously we're making a pair so we need two of everything there we go and oops non-slip mat and everything sticks so then we do exactly the same for that one hold them down so it'll stick take a second or two for it to stick down there we go and then we can add a little bit of glue to the toe of our sole and we slip it in to the shoe front hold it down now if you didn't want to use wet glue you'd be able to use tape as well it's just personal choice really so there we go so that's the basis of our little shoe and then we can do the same for the other sole little bit of wet glue on the toe and pop it in there we go hold it down so it will stick oops that's the only trouble when using wet glue you seem to be able to have to hold it for a length of time we don't have there hold it down and let it sit for a minute now these two little bows that I've cut these make the tiniest bows in the whole wide world well I think they are and they're just so cute so now the easiest thing that I found to do is get a bone folder or a pencil or something that will stretch the fibres to make it curl like so and then you have to add a tiny bit of tape or glue to the centre like that peel off the back of it like that and then take the edge of the bow flip the tail back so it doesn't stick down so you're taking that to the centre and then the same again for the other side so then you have the tiny bow for the front of the shoe now I've found that adding a just a tiny spot of glue will help the tails sit in the right place rather than pop back and then I add another piece of tape to the back and I can attach it to my shoe so we'll just do that now and I'll show you it again because we've got two to make and this is the first of the two so the extra tape helps the tails and then we can add the little bow to the front of the shoe like that 
So I'm just going to make the second one really quickly using the same method. Stretch the tails, get the actual tape for the centre. There we go, add the piece and then take the back of it away. Turn the bow in to the centre and same at the other side, like that. Little blob of glue at each side for the tails. There we go. And a piece of tape across the back to hold it in place. And then you can pop it on our shoe, peel the back of the tape away, pop it on our shoe and just to decorate the shoes I've actually got some crystals and I'm going to add a crystal to each of the top of the bows on the shoes like that and there we go for the second shoe now I'm happy with my shoes like that and the only thing I'm going to do is add some 3D foam to the heel. Um, just one piece should be enough. And then I'm going to add this to the front of my card. Because now we're ready to attach our shoes. A little bit of tape on the back so that we can attach them. Now rather than having made the shoes previously I wanted to be able to show you how to make them from start to finish and I know so many of my demonstrations show you things that are pre-made that I've already die cut that I've already put together but I thought for you to be able to see how to make these gorgeous little shoes it might just spur you on to think well you know what they are so cute I could do that okay so now all we have to do is add our shoes to the front of our card so I'm thinking I'm going to add them at a bit of an angle like that and that there we go and then to finish the card off I've just got a little bow to add above our sentiment. Oh, it's stuck to me. There we go. And that is our lady's shoe. Or should I say ruby slippers card finished. I just think out of all the projects I've done, and I've done so many, even for different other companies as well, the, the shoes are just so gorgeous. Now, if you're posting this, you've got a little bit of bulk, obviously, on the front. I think it would be a card that I would hand to somebody unless you're willing to add your extra bubble wrap. And they, they're not as high as you think. Just a couple of layers of decoupage and they would go flat if you were pressing them down to go in an envelope. However, I don't think you'd want to press them down. And I, I just think they're so pretty and I hope you agree. I know it's been a long one today and I just hope you've enjoyed it. And it's given you just a few ideas of how to use the shoes and what you can do with them. We will be using this again. We'll be making something else, so don't worry. All the information will be on my blog. Please join me again tomorrow for the fourth and final part of our four days of Easter. And please click like, please comment. I love hearing from you. It takes me a while to get back to you just because of work and different things. But I do get back to everybody eventually. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.